next up is a speaker who probably has different views from some of the people in this room, um, which is good. Conferences aren't about preaching to the choir. They're about testing ideas and being provocative. And uh, I've, I've always been intrigued by Bjorn Longborg ever since I read The Skeptical Environmentalist. He came in for a lot of heat. Um, some of it may be justified. I found him very convincing in a lot of ways. He gave a TED Talk, which convinced a lot of people here many years ago now. And uh, Bjorn, welcome back. And uh, I would like to hear um, your current thinking about climate change and a sensible strategy. Bjorn Longborg. Thank you. And he won it in four minutes. So global warming is real, and it's a problem. But we're not fixing it. Look at CO2 emissions. They keep going up and up. And that's because renewable energy is not yet ready. So we need to find a different way. Remember, we have spent the last couple of centuries trying to get away from renewables. In 1800, we got almost all of our renewables. Sorry, you should also just see that. We got almost all of our renewables, all of our energy from renewables. Today, we get just one third of 1% of our energy from solar and wind. The rest of the about 13% we get from water and wood, mostly in third world countries. So instead, we try to push renewables with taxes and subsidies. But the problem with taxes, and especially energy taxes, is it hurts the, especially the poor. With strong green policies in Britain, cost of heating have gone up 63% of the past five years. That means that now there's one million elderly that are struggling to keep warm in the winter. It's estimated that 2,700 of them die each year. And with subsidies, remember, we've heard ever since the 70s, oh, we just need a few more years of subsidies, and then we're good. But the truth is, we'll keep paying more and more. The International Energy Agency estimate that today, the world pays $101 billion in subsidies to green energy. But in a generation's time, the bill is not going to go down. We will owe $223 billion per year in subsidies to green energy. But there is a smarter way, and that's what I'm here to talk about. I work with 27 of the world's top climate economists and three Nobel laureates. They say the solution is about innovation, as it always was. Remember, back in the 1860s, when we were hunting whales almost to extinction because of the very high-quality light provided by their oil, the solution to that was not to tax whales. The solution was the innovation of kerosene that undercut the cost of whale oil by 90% and essentially saved the whales. Whenever more horses were threatening to inundate London and New York with manure around 1900, the solution was not to subsidize walking. The solution was the car. And of course, when the car then later on went on to provide more air pollution, the solution again was an innovation, namely the catalytic converter. When India was starving in 1970, the solution was not to subsidize food for every Indian. The solution was the Green Revolution, their innovative plant science to produce much more food for every plot of land. And so again, the solution to global warming is not subsidies, but it's to dramatically ramp up investment in green innovation. If we could innovate the price of green energy down, innovate it down far enough, and everyone, including China and India, will buy it. Ah, but surely, you say, subsidies is the way to power that innovation. Well, actually not. Because all of our money, or almost all of our subsidy money, we spend on existing technology. We spend it on these wind turbines that we already know are not effective. I mean, it's really quite simple. If we want better technology, we should invest more in researchers. And that's why the Nobel laureates found that for every dollar spent on current policies, on existing subsidies to solar and wind, we'll avoid about three cents of climate damage. That's a very poor way to invest in the world. But if we spent that same dollar on researchers, we could actually avoid about $11 of climate damage. We could make an amazing difference. And that's the real point. Think of the 1950s. 
We didn't get computers because we subsidized vacuum tubes. We didn't get computers because we taxed typewriters. We got them because we invested heavily in researchers that developed the transistor, the integrated circuit, and eventually the Mac and the PC that we all want to buy. And that's why we need to say the following. We need to stop applauding our politicians for spending hundreds of billions of dollars on ineffective green policies. Instead, what we do need to do is to spend and encourage them to dramatically ramp up investment in green energy innovation. Fundamentally, if we can innovate the price of green energy down below fossil fuels, we'll have won. Everyone will buy it, including China and India. And that's why innovation is the solution to global warming, just like it was for whales, horses, and starving kids. Thank you. Hey. Just, a, just a really quick question for you, though. I think a lot of people in the room think there's a, there's a lot of logic to what you just said. But you're an economist. Um, if carbon is a long-term cost to the world, what, we don't, I, a lot of people don't understand why you wouldn't get behind a carbon tax that was revenue neutral, that sent that, sent that signal. I said that in my book. We should have a carbon tax on the cost of CO2, which we're estimating is about $5 per ton globally. But what we have to remember is that's not going to solve the problem. It's in economically efficient, but there are two things wrong with it. First, it's not going to solve the problem. It's going to cut a little bit, probably about 5 or 10% of global emissions. But the second thing, that's the political issue, you're not going to get it most places. Actually, we've seen it to be very, very politically divisive in Australia and the US. It's very hard to imagine to happen in China. There are many places where they couldn't even afford it. So the, the problem I have but with people, it, But people yeah. like you calling publicly for it would actually accelerate the chance. And I've done that. So let's just say that once more. Yes, carbon tax is a good idea. But the real point here is about green innovation. If we get green innovation going, we'll solve it. Thank you so much, Bjorn Thank, Thank you. you.